Nerf this! Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the notification bell. That way you get notified when I have new videos coming out almost every single day. So, you know, also check out the details of my videos when you get a chance. I've got good resources for you in there. I have links to my Discord server if you want to hang out with me. I have links to WHF's recruiting Discord server if you're interested in joining the WHF family. Also have links to WHF's live streamers. If you want to see some of our CWL wars as they're going down live, go ahead and give them a follow and you'll get notified when they're streaming those. So with that, let's get into this video. This is my new favorite series. Now, I really like the base identification series too, um, but this is newer than that. And I, I really like this one as well. This is the Fix That Hit series. This is focusing on noticing all the little details uh, that you can turn a failed attack into a successful attack on cleanup. On cleanup, we know where all the bombs are. We know what the CC is. We know where all the t Teslas are. So we're able to plan so much more effectively than you are on a fresh hit uh, you know and you also have the information and the attacks how did things path how far did they get what could I do differently you have so much more information to look at and to really kind of factor in to, to creating a winning plan for the base and uh, I really enjoy that sort of thing so with that I'm going to try only doing two bases this time these these videos are usually over like 15 minutes I'm going to try and shorten it down to 10 by just doing two bases so four hits we're going to show the, the attempt and then the cleanup and we're going to try and notice a little things in there that that made it successful or didn't make the first one successful with that let's go ahead and get into kiki's fresh hit on number 27 now you see kiki's got his queen all the way over on the left hand side he's gonna sue her for these two wizard towers right here oops i don't want to type. there we go times one so he's gonna try and bring in a wrecker like right down here at an angle and pick up the enemy queen and enemy cc by not sending his queen in and only having one poison, he is betting that the enemy CC is either going to be a Hound and a Loon or a much smaller CC like Witches, Baby Dragon, Valks, that sort of thing that can be killed with just one poison. Unfortunately, he guesses wrong. A big dragon pops out of that CC, uh, and he really doesn't have anything to deal with that big dragon. One poison, not nearly enough to kill a big dragon, especially with the newer max levels that they've come out with now. Uh, honestly, I don't even know if two poisons does it anymore with this new max level. I think it might leave him with a sliver. So definitely not going to get that that dragon down. And, you know, the rest of his kill squad falls really short as well. Probably doesn't. He brought some bowlers, didn't get as much value as he wanted there, didn't get the enemy queen down, You'll see he doesn't have a skelly spell in this composition. So he was planning on getting that enemy queen with the kill squad. And you know he was definitely planning on getting that dragon. So that's why this one's going to fall short. He does have some pretty decent pathing. And he's, you know, his Lalo is always excellent. But having a, a dragon up chasing your loons and the enemy queen when you really don't have anything to deal with her is just going to be a death sentence on this one. Because of that, it's going to fall short. So times to it through the rest you know he was he, he did save that rage that was a nice audible he saved that rage for that area right over the queen because sometimes you get lucky she'll stand really close to defense and you'll catch her on a loon drop uh you know even if he would have got lucky there you still got that big dragon running around uh you know eating up your cleanup troops eating up your loons so uh but you know he didn't give up still tried it anyways so with that let's go ahead and take a look at the cleanup hit on this number 27 i believe this is done by johnny yeah johnny boy all right so let's take a look at the adjustments that johnny boy is going to make first of all he's gonna send the queen in uh it's not a hound you know you can get a lot of extra value that way and you'll definitely get that dragon killed he definitely brought a little different army too he brings a bowler to get a bowler bounce but other than that he brings four valks to send in remember the bowlers didn't get too much done in there um but the valks did see when you're using a wrecker the bowlers generally hang behind it so you you can usually use a rage on the valks coming out of the wrecker or on the bowlers back behind it but it's really difficult to catch them both in one rage so he likes to bring more valks they're a lot tankier they can you know help break through the walls they can kill those heroes really fast and and they're going to keep up with that wrecker for the most part so he's going to be able to get the whole value out of that rage as well so let's see how this plays out for him that bowler bounce over on that mortar very nice 
baby dragon over on the right hand side to create that side of the funnel you'll see he's not bringing 10 wizards here and just throwing them down because that's some standard composition he's only bringing exactly what he needs to make that funnel it's custom tailored armies that's the only way to go so now he's going to bring that wrecker in and king as well although really want to get that other uh pump down so that king doesn't walk it looks like his king is going to walk miss funneled that a little bit um so the king walks but since he brought those extra valks he's also got a freeze for that single target inferno keeping that uh wall record alive a lot longer and those extra valks he brought four of his own he's gonna have four more max valks popping out of that siege machine they're gonna get in there and do some really great work they're gonna be able to break through that next layer wall the enemy queen is already down now they're running down the down there even further and they're taking out wizard towers um uh, gonna take out another archer tower very very nice the queen is able to get almost that sweeper down and uh sure enough one of those valks is gonna break through there and finish that sweeper off as well so very nicely done you see he, there's a huge difference in the amount of value that he got on this kill squad as opposed to on kiki's kill squad you know he's able to take the information that he had from the fresh hit and use it to create a much better much more precise plan that fits this base you know knowing the cc knowing the the pathing and all that stuff and just really come up the winning plan on this and as a result he's gonna crush this base has a ton of loons left up at the end very very nicely done really beautiful rotational lalo coming around this side here kind of waiting to see where he's going to use that heel and there it comes down covering that first wizard tower entirely uh they soak up a red bomb right there in that heel beautifully look at that on the left he brought down a single minion towards that exposed wizard tower and it pulled a red bomb right away from it so that, that red bomb didn't damage all those loans would it have mattered? No. Uh, you know, that huge pack of loons there just came out of the heel, full health. Even if the red bomb would have hit him, you know, but still, it's, these are habits that, that him and, and some of these old school guys in, in WHF have, you know, just habits that they've gotten into for these successful attacks. And that's just another little small detail uh, that's really interesting to see. And, uh, you know, for how effective it is, especially if you're coming into a close hit, you got a, like two, you know, four loons left or something. They're half health. They're coming into a wizard tower. That red bomb and the wizard tower combination is going to be the end of your raid. But if you can get that one minion over there on it and soak up that red bomb first, a lot of times that's going to be the difference between a triple and a fail. So very nice little detail there by Johnny Boy. And really, really crushed this base with those adjustments. Very nicely done. Next, we're going to take a look at a minor hit. A cleanup on a minor hit. And we got Ballin that, that goes ahead and tries this first one here on number 14. So let's see what happens. So this is just a mass miner, no queen walk component to it whatsoever. He's going to bring down his queen first. And looks like he's kind of waiting a while. She's going to get targeted by the expo pretty soon. So his queen's getting targeted really early. He's going to have to waste her ability almost immediately. So now he's got a wall wrecker coming in with miners coming. He's only dropped a few miners at this point. He's really holding off on the rest of those miners. And I'm not sure why. Maybe he went over to go look at his queen and pop her ability. I'm not sure. But you definitely want to, when it's time to get the miners down, you want to get them down. You want to get that momentum built up, taking out those defenses, getting back underground where they're safe from damage, and just moving through the base. If you're sprinkling them in, then they're going to be stuck on those defenses forever. Miner's strength is that they go underground and they're not targeted the whole time. They're not super tanked. It, you know if they stay above ground the whole time they're getting roasted so he's got a, a rage for this core but you'll see a lot of guys that use a rage right there because there was like two gold storages and you know two expos on the back side of it a, a cc but he's gonna he's just gonna fall a little bit short on this raid you know um we saw the wall record go down really soon it only broke one wall um you know, so went down pretty soon, and he's just not going to have enough to get through the rest of this base. Even though they were coming out of that rage, by the time they got to those two expos where they really still needed the benefit of that rage, they were moving really slow again. They're running into more ground skellies back here, you know, right next to a bomb tower. So really needed probably another heal to get through that base, um, and just for things to work out a little better in general. So going to fall short on this one. But Trevor's going to come in and clean it up with the miners. Let's take a look at the adjustments that he makes. We'll base around 14.
So he's got he's got 39 miners instead of 40. So he's gonna bring a wizard and two archers. Let's see where he's gonna use that wizard right on the other side of that king, kind of trying to help keep that king a little closer into the base and really thin out that section for the miners a little bit better. So now he's going to drop down his queen, and then he's going to drop down his miners before his wall wrecker. So that's interesting. Usually I don't do it that way, but I might switch because I've seen a lot of these raids where this wall wrecker stays up through most of the raid, and having that extra tanking in the base, you got to think when those miners go back under, any of those defenses that are near are going to reroute and target that wall wrecker. You know, and not only that, but by the time it does finally pop, you got those max miners coming out towards it back into the base with full health. And uh, I've really seen it work out well for a lot of people. Another difference he had is he brought five heals instead of four heals in one rage. Obviously, that wasn't enough heals to get through the base last time, so he's hoping that, that if his miners get through it enough without the rage, that that last heal is going to come in more handy than that rage did towards the end of this raid. Which, considering he's got to end on a bomb tower right next to two heroes, I'm going to say that's an excellent choice. Heroes are really high health, those expos are really high hit points, and to have a bomb tower right next to all that high hit point stuff that's going to hang up those miners, including that skelly spell that just popped up out of there that's a death sentence you gotta have that area covered up with a heal which he did all the way up until by the time they got the bomb tower wore off but it kept that splash damage from raining down on him that whole time kept him healed up and as a result he's gonna have plenty of room there he also he did not leave his queen out to dry remember Balin put his queen down first thing and she stepped up into range and had to pop her ability right away trevor waited on that he made sure that he got the queen down at a time that was really close to the time his miners went down so that as the queen's funneling the miners are getting in their tanking and as a result she made it all the way to that bottom of that base before she even had to pop her ability he timed it beautifully so very nice adjustments uh to you know very nice adjustments to that minor attempt to make it a minor triple. I really, really liked it, and I hope you guys liked it too. With that, uh, you know, tell me down in the comments, how do you like this new series? I I love it. This is like, this is my stuff right here, planning those little tiny details and, you know what I mean, thinking of those ideas and seeing things and making it work another way. That's, that's my jam right there. So let me know how you guys like it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Nerf this!